Today I will be talking on surgical antibiotic prophylaxis. So, surgical prophylaxis antibiotic is the use of antibiotic for the prevention of surgical site infections. And uh, it doesn't include preoperative decolonization or treatment of established infections. And uh, the treatment of injury or disorder by giving incision or uh, manipulation using our instruments is regarded as surgery. And when we do surgery, some sort of contamination, maybe from the uh, patient, maybe from the, even from the surgeons, from the instruments, is inevitable. And surgical side infection is the most common complications in the, our surgical field after post-op. So why should we give antibiotic? Because of the inevitable contaminations, we cannot bring up to zero level of any microbes when we do surgery. So there is a every chance of contamination from the patient. Maybe from at the side of the incision, maybe from the nasal mucosa of the patients, from the say umbilicus when you do lap laparoscopic surgery, most of the time the umbilical site is usually uh, contaminated or is, all the time is men dirty. And even from our staff, surgeons, scrubbing, nurse, there is sounds of all the time contamination. And uh, most common, as I said, possible acquired infection uh, is the surgical site infections in our surgical field. And uh, this also causes additional cost to the health systems. And in the U.S., it's around $26 billion per year. And when there is infection, we give lots of antibiotic. And increase give, uh, giving of the antibiotic, it causes more cost and more hospital stay. And it comes, as already spoken by Madam or signs of antibiotic resistance. So this is the distribution of the pathogenic isolates on the surgical site infections. Well, this is from the uh, National Healthcare Society the Safety Network. <coughs> and then comes, do all the surgical procedure need uh, uh, prophylaxis? A clean Laparoscopic cholecystomy, we are not giving any antibiotic. Plain hernia surgery, we are not giving antibiotic. But due to the afraid of having loss of surgical side infections, we are compelled to give antibiotic. So, we have to consider while giving antibiotic the type of the wound we are managing the patient factor and technical factor. So type of the wound in our surgery, clean surgery for a hernia operation is a clean surgery. Still then, there is chance of infection which account less than five persons. There is still chance of infections. So we have to consider of giving prophylactic antibiotic. And clean contaminated like appendectomy, there is still chance of two to 10 persons of infections and in dirty and contaminated, more than 30 percent sounds like that. So in the patient factor, so we have to consider the systemic conditions of the patients like diabetes, cortico, steroid uses, uh, obesity is a <coughs> non conditions and these are the other conditions from the patients. And the locant factor also we have to uh, consider like poor hygiene of the conditions of the operation theater, we have to consider, and any presence of the foreign body, and too much use of electrocautery itself, it will help in having infections, and uh, injections with pressure, and uh, putting so many drains and all, is a 
signs of having infections. Yes, here, here removal will result. So, in the pre-op advice, whether a doctor ad advice of saving of the perineum part while we are doing operation in EPGSM, many a time we see perineum part is safe or even the operator side is safe. The recent consensus say don't do any removal with razor. At the most, if you want, you do with clipping. That is all on the table itself. Because when we do with razor, there is still signs of some infects, uh, some minor abrasion which, which may, we may not see by our naked eye. And uh, yeah, there may be some, say, bacterial, uh, this one, colonizing from the hair follicle and it may invade on the abraded skin. Abraded skin because of use of razor. So there is a signs of infections pre off. And we'll be doing surgery next day. So there is still signs of infections. So the technical factor, too long, too long durations of the operation itself is a risk factor and uh, uh, massive bleeding, more than 1.5 meters. And uh, usually abdominal surgery, when we do intestine and stomach, there is still signs of infection. Infection is higher. And so here comes the role of the minimal assess surgery. Here, we give less incision, and there's less trauma to the tissue, and there's less chance of infections. So we should have a goal why we should give prophylactic antibiotic. Is to decrease the surgical site infection, number one, and to minimize the effect on patient's normal bacterial, bacterial flora. Every patient has got his or her own bacterial flora, even myself as spoken by the Ranjana. So this, we should mi minimize the effect of overgrowth of this flora. And we should try to decrease the antibiotic resistance. And we have to think about the cost. Cost to the patient, not only to the patient, is it cost to the nation. Because the employed person may have taken lots of antibiotics and when they come for reimbursement, the government is giving it's the loss of the nation. So, we have to select antibiotic. So when we select, it should be effective against the microorganism and it's better to cause infections. As far as possible, we should not give any broad spectrum antibiotic. And should have educated local tissue levels and uh, should have minimal side effect and relatively, and uh, this one, <coughs> fitness makes it. A good antibiotic usually cost, is costlier, but still then we have to think of a bit cheaper one, and not prospective antibiotic, and preferably single dose. We should confine to a single dose. So optimal timing, these are uh, many, uh, recommendations from many studies, but usually, within 60 minutes, it's recommended. But for other antibiotic like, say, vancomycin or fluoroquinolones, we may give from, say, 60 to 120 minutes prior to the season of the surgery. So, why single dose prophylaxis? We should think of single, single dose prophylaxis. Less side effect, less workload, to the, especially to the, our, uh, this one, nursing staffs and our junior doctors, and that's also that stay. As long as patient is getting IV antibiotic, patient prefer to stay in the hospital. And less was material, and last also will be less. So we have to do the dose adjustment in obese patient and the hepatic and renal dysfunction patients, and the redosing. So, if the operation is very long, so every two to four hours we have to give another next redosing, next dose of antibiotic. And when there is excessive bleeding, we have to give another dose of antibiotic. So duration, uh, as recommended by many study, duration should be up to 12, 24 hours or less. For the color thoracic, we may extend up to 48 hours. And uh, our choice of antibiotic 
it should be then on our local antibio ground. So these are the recommended from many studies for cardiac, thoracic, these are recommended and uh, this is an alternative. And uh, our biliary, in the biliary lab, laparoscopic biliary surgery, in the elective and the low risk patients, we may not require to give antibiotic. In high risk, okay, we have to give it. And this is an antibiotic, uh, appendectomy, in intestine surgery, colorectal, these are the recommend, recommendation, but we have to consider our local antibiogram. Before uh, we did our antibiotic, the profile antibiotic of it, uh, I'll just add something like a patient is a known case of some resistant bacterial infections or was a carrier of some resistant bacteria previously. So at the time of plant surgery, whether we should give profilactic antibiotic, we should be acting on that resistant bacteria. So many study, many they give like only when if you, we are planning a major surgery like liver transplant and all, we can give a prophylactic antibiotic the patient was harboring before a resistant, bac resistant bacteria, we can give a prophylactic antibiotic which will be acting on that resistant bacteria. But for minor operation, for any cutaneous surgery, we may not require to give. And those patients having with, say, some drains, tubes, preoperatively, whether we should give antibiotic for any uh, resistant bacteria found from that devices of that drain or tube. Yes, we have to give before the operation. Before the operation, if any resistant bacteria are found in the drain or tube, before the operation, we have to give prophylactic. We should be acting on that resistant bacteria preoperatively, not after operation. And as long as there is a remote infection in, the, in any part of the body of the patient, we should postpone the elective surgery. And, and this is the last slide. When uh, we think of prophylactic antibiotic, we have to do audit. And we have to record for any prescriptions of any antibiotic, we have to record all the parameters of other studies.